What's going on out there, folks? Welcome on in to another edition of Over and Back. I'm your host, Dan Alexander, and very excited to welcome in another guest here for week two. Week one was great. Evan Malloy dropping all kinds of hot takes, and the hot takes will continue coming fast and furious as I had to go to my Philly roots, get a Philly girl on the show. We got Devin Caney joining us. You can follow her on Twitter at Devin underscore Caney. You can find her pretty much on any sideline where there is lacrosse going on currently reporting with the NLL. We saw her with the PLL last summer. And of course, you can find her with Superbook Sports as well. Devin, I know you are busy. So thank you for taking time out and hopping on with us here. How are you doing? Of course, I'm doing well. I'm so honored to be what just the second guest on this show, and I'm excited to talk some lacrosse. Honestly, this might be the first time I've been able to talk lacrosse and sports betting together. So I'm I'm so honored and excited to be on. It's it's a safe space for betters and lacrosse fans alike. It's like the best Venn diagram ever when those two <laughs> intersect. So I'm right there with you, Devin. And of course, you know, Philly roots through and through. I, I It wasn't hard for me to lobby and say, let's get a fellow Birds fan on here in week two. So if you just joined us, you haven't heard the show before, we go through three different quick hitting segments for you. We go quick sticks. We talk some total talk. And then we end with our angle of the week, sprinkling in some actionable info all along the way so nothing to it but to do it so let's get to it Devin and start off here with our quick sticks segment and we're going to start with the first game of the weekend why not let's go in sequential order 6 p.m eastern time it's Redwoods taken on Chrome Redwoods one and a half point favorites total in this one 23 and a half and I, I say that kind of incredulously because the Redwoods just kind of got old by Atlas. You know, it's yeah. only week one, so some growing pains for sure. Chrome comes off an upset win. They were two and a half point dogs. They went outright against the Archers. So I don't know. The first takeaway for me for this was when this line opened, I was just a little bit surprised to see with what we saw last week that the Redwoods were favored. Like, am I alone in that thinking? I mean, I looking back on it, I was surprised that the Chrome beat the Archers, but this is a hot take and just looking at some futures right now, you didn't even ask me for this content, but uh, I think the Atlas are going to win it all this year. Ooh. I know spicy take. I, Cause I watched them play in the semis last year and they have all the pieces they need. They have it together. And I think they're going to be a clearly dominant team throughout this PLL season. So I think given the competition, I wasn't surprised that the Redwoods got rolled. Uh, am I surprised that their favorites in this one? I don't know if I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I, but I do think that the Redwoods will win this game against the Chrome. The Chrome are lacking. How do I describe it? They have an it factor that they're lacking. Oh, I go I, off, I, I, I play, I choose my bets a lot. I call it, I go off vibes, which I know it sounds ridiculous, but the Chrome's vibes are off where the Redwoods appear to have it more together. So I actually support that, that they're the favorites in this one. Yeah, I, I just, I guess maybe, you know, it's kind of the knee jerk reaction, but clearly the odds makers kind of think in the same aligning as you is, you know, a lot of veteran present on that Redwoods team. I dropped the hot take last week that I think the Redwoods are going to win it all. So I already have egg on my face from week oh, one. Wow. Okay. So what? Uh, yeah, we're, we're already starting with some hot takes right out of the <laughs> gate. So I think the one thing, and it kind of backs up what you're saying there, Devin, is if you just go back to last season, because it's not like we have as much historical data to draw on, which is how I always kind of like trying to formulate my bets. Not, not like that's any slam dunk or anything like that, but you just go back to last year and one and a half point spreads, either for or against, were not very kind to the Chrome. The sneaky stat I have for the folks in this one, they were 0 and 5 as a one and a half point underdog last year, 0 and 2 as a one and a half point favorite. So that's a line that either way hasn't done well. So even if the public does start coming in and starts betting the Chrome and we even potentially see this line flip, all the covers for Chrome have come as a two and a half point dog. They're three and zero against the spread. Two of those wins being outright. So Chrome, they 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 like when they like when the dogs are barking when they're favorites. Mm -hmm. eh, it, it's kind of the way that you're looking at it. So we'll see if that changes. But Devin already saying thinks the Redwoods might come away. Now, would you lay the one and a half, or would you just maybe take the money line? Like, don't even mess with the spread because these games are always close. Yeah, no, I'm I'm going outright, not messing with the spread. I like it. Outright. <laughs> so we got an outright winner at the top. We got a Atlas are going to win the championship, and we're only minutes in here on over <laughs> and back. We made the right choice bringing Devin yeah. on here 
in week two. Let's keep rolling here in our quick sticks. Saturday, 845. We got the whip snakes taking on the water dogs total in this one, 23 and a half. Um, this one is just, I know it's only week two. So, you know, you can only really quantify it as, well, it was only one game, you know, what are they going to do? But the water dogs just didn't look right. And, and I thought that maybe having Michael Sowers back for them was really going to be a nice boost for them. But then you look at the other sideline. Sure, the Whipsnakes beat chaos, but it took some late game heroics. It, it took some some sweating for any of the mm -hmm. uh, the backers of the Whipsnakes, a goal late by Mike Chanichuk to get it home. So when you just see Whipsnakes favored in this one, do you think, Maybe, you know, the dog plays into it with water dogs trying to get right. Or I was concerned with what I kind of saw from the water dogs. I know it's week one, so I'm not hitting the panic button, but close game or more of the same, do you think, from last week for the dogs this week? I think it's more of the same. Uh, mm. I actually heard a crazy statistic that Michael Sowers has yet to win a professional lacrosse game. You're right. That he's played in, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And I like Michael Sowers, Philly guy. Look, Philly guy. So I have to support him. Uh, I'm not saying it's all his fault, but I agree. Uh, the water dogs just have not looked right. Um, and the whip snakes still have, even though they are, and we'll touch on this, I'm sure, in a bit without Zed Williams because he's mm -hmm. playing in the NLL championships uh, series. But they still have Matt Rambo. They still have uh, Gutty. Like, I, I just think that the water dogs defense can't can't stop the whip snakes. So this one, I would, I would take the points with the whip snakes. I think that's safe. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, kind of backing up what you were saying about the missing players as well. I think the water dogs were, were missing ward and cage too. Yeah. You know, it's not like yeah. I felt, I almost mm -hmm. felt bad for DeLuca because like you had to get up to speed so quickly, you know, they're playing against the high powered offense, but um, you know, some of those missing effects. And just like you said, we're going to get into it once we roll into our total talk segment of just when you are missing the nucleus of your team or parts that are nu the nucleus of your team and you only have a week of preseason, there's so much of that chemistry that maybe you're hoping for, or maybe that you're lacking in week one. So I think it perfectly ties into the way that you're looking. The sneaky stat that I have in this one before we roll on into our total talk and uh, get into one of your de facto favorite teams in the PLL. Water Dogs last year were good as underdogs, kind of like their namesake would say, five and three against the number as underdogs last year. But with last week's loss where they were one and a half point favorites, Again, small sample size, but they're just one and two lifetime as favorites. So maybe now that they're back in the underdog role, it could play to their advantage there. But I'm kind of with Devin. I think maybe I would feel a little more comfortable laying the lumber with the whips rather than, um, you know, just what we saw with the water dogs last week. There's 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 some chemistry concerns I have there. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe once they get Ward in cage, that's a little bit more of a steady hand. Not to Matt, right. knock Matt DeLuca, but I just think, you know, well, it no. plays towards it a Yeah, and just one last point on that. You know, it's not like you're not just missing your goaltender. You're missing one of the best goaltenders in the game right now, who is a really key piece, if not, as you mentioned, the new nucleus of your team. So yeah, clearly you're not going to look right. And I think until Dylan Ward gets back with the water dogs, they're not going to be meshing the way that they should be. Yeah, I'm with you. The only way that they look right is just the sweet ass uniforms they have. I'm a big fan of that chrome, like purple lid they're rocking. So even when they're not looking right, maybe chemistry wise, the fit is always on point for the water dogs. We, we, we can probably at least agree on that. Right, Devin? You know, I think this is oh, a perfect no. segue. Uh, my favorite unis in the PLL are hands down the chaos. Hands uh, down. With that that <laughs> chrome like red lid, that's that's mm -hmm. that's the one that does it for you. Okay, well you're right. Yeah. It is a perfect segue because we're getting right into our total talk on over and back. We're looking at this archers and chaos game some uniforms going to be looking nice on the field according to Devin hopefully chaos backers hoping they're going to be looking just as nice as they did in week one just maybe getting that win instead however they're underdogs here archers one and a half point favorites taking on the chaos the total in this one a I guess ceremonially low because blaze Reardon is in net. And that just means you're probably going to see the lowest total of the week. Like every single week, when you run down the PLL board, you see, well, where's the chaos game? And Oh yeah, that's the lowest total of the week, mm -hmm. 22 and a half. And I think we just start with that. I mean, blaze Reardon, he wins the MVP last year. So I think the secret is already out. I mean, this guy is just an absolute game changer in every facet of the word, right? 
Absolutely. And I think this game in particular, or as, as long as the chaos is uh, a lot of their key offensive guys who are on the NLL bandits are out of the game, even more falls to Blaze Reardon, which I know he can totally handle. I love Blaze. I love his mentality, whether he's, you know, playing goalie in the field game or offense in the box. He's just such a cool, calm, collected guy at all times. So I think that he will definitely rise to the occasion. Um, despite them losing in week one, I think when you're just missing the amount of players that the chaos are missing, especially when it's guys like Josh Byrne, like Dane Smith, like Tahoka Nantikoke, who, you know, are scoring several goals a game for you, it's just gonna, it has to become a defensive battle and it has to come down to what Blaze is able to do in net. So if you're gonna need a player to have to step up and, and help you when your offense may be a little bit decimated, you want it to be Blaze Reardon. But because of that, yeah, absolutely take the under on total points scored here. Yeah, and I think, you know, all backing up what you're kind of saying there, you just look at last year, and this was with all the star power for the chaos. These teams played three times last year, and only one of those games went over the number, and it was their third meeting when they met up in the mm -hmm. playoffs. And guess what? It went over by the hook. There were 23 total goals in that game. So I think even with that star power, even with that really well-oiled offensive unit, this was kind of been a matchup that's that's just naturally played towards the under. I think Blaze is a major factor of that, but I, I also think there's almost like this psychological factor that I don't want to say the chaos quite have the archer's number, but that defensive unit of chaos, I think, you know, strikes a little bit of fear in this offensive mm -hmm. unit for archers. And I think we saw last week, this Archers team looks different without Grant Amon. That was the big mm -hmm. question is what is it going to look like? Hopefully his injury doesn't continue to nag because you go back again to last season's averages and the Archers without Amon in last week's game scored three fewer goals than their season average last year. So again, it's only week two. We don't know how long Amon's going to be out for. So I'm not going to, you know, slam the panic button, sound the alarm, but Reason for concern without Amon, is that going to start reaching a higher fever pitch as the season goes on if he's not able to get back on the field? I would say so for sure. Um, I mean, I think the the overall theme so far this season has been who are these teams, not just mm. the archers, but especially without Amon because he's such a key offensive player. Uh, who are these teams when they're missing their star players, right? Like if you look across the league, almost every team is missing at least one person who is a key player, key performer for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, hopefully Grant Amon, another Philly guy, have to shout that out. Uh, always want our Philly guys to come back and be healthy. I think without him, the archers will struggle. I do think the chaos are going to win this one. Spicy take, maybe, I don't know. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are thinking the same. I think, you know, some people saw that you could get them at even money, getting a goal and a half against an Archer's team. So, you know, I, I think maybe a, a, a medium spice take right there. Cause I think I, I, I lean the same way with you. I just don't, I think the better way to attack this game is probably look at that total. And, you know, I, I think it just naturally yes. plays towards the under, but I'm with you. You know, the chaos are also a team that whenever you piss them off, that's not going to go well for you. And they definitely are going to be frustrated from last week, Devin. You took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, if you know Andy Towers, you know he's big mad and he's going into that game ready to fight no matter what players are available or not. So, uh, yeah, but I, I, I would say that the under in total points is probably the safest when it comes to that yeah. game. And if we're uh, and if we're mentioning Andy Towers as well, we if this game does go under, it's probably going to be to quote him. Blaze Reardon is playing effing sick is uh, <laughs> is is one of the direct Andy Towers quotes that he basically says uh, almost every single game. So thoughts mm -hmm. on the lowest total of the week? We're both kind of leaning towards that under. Last week, Evan Malloy called this low total a rat line, begging you to take the over. I don't know if we're taking the cheese on that one. Mm -hmm. Let's roll into the last segment, angle of the week time. We're going to the nationally televised game on Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern time. It's Atlas taking on the Cannons. Total in this one, 24 and a half. But the bigger story, Devin, is this line. Atlas, two and a half point favorites. And I'll start by just mentioning one of my absolute favorite bets has just been 
Put a blindfold on. Tell me who's getting two and a half and taking them. Two and a half point underdogs have been a great play for betters. After last week, it now moves to seven and two after the Chrome wins outright. That's 78% blindly playing two and a half point underdogs in the PLL. However, I'm taking that blindfold off, Devin, because what the Atlas did last week scared the hell out of me if I'm trying to Mm -hmm. back anybody getting in their way. So Mm -hmm. while it has been historically a slam dunk spot, I don't know with what we've seen from the Bulls, it's, it's as confident taking that two and a half. Hey, I mean, you heard my hot take at the start of this show. I think if Jeff Teat continues to show up and put up what? What did he put up? 10 points last week? I mean, he's rolling. Rolling. I think he's going to continue doing that. Uh, I think Lyle Thompson, obviously incredible. It's going to be a fun, fun matchup to watch. I'll say that. I got to stick with my original take, though, from the start of the show and think that absolutely the Atlas can pull this one off. So, uh, I mean, I just think that the talent that the Atlas have, again, you know, even just watching them last season, they haven't made too, too many changes in their roster. Their team chemistry is there. Uh, I got to go, got to go Atlas. And I don't think two and a half is too aggressive of line. I don't. Wow. Cause you, you can, yeah. you can get it at some plus money. If you, if you have the confidence laying it and it sounds like Devin is all in on the bulls. Now, before we, you know, break this game down just a little bit more, I think a big takeaway in week one is just how fun a lot of these offenses looked. And I think one mm-hmm. of the most exciting things is what we just saw from the cannons. I think, you know, a lot of people were expecting the water dogs to come out hot right out of the gate, but early on, they never really even felt close in that game because what they were doing offensively were the cannons. The chemistry between Lyle Thompson and Asher Nolting is looking mm-hmm. like it is going to be must see television. So it's great that people will get to see this, you know, in, on nationally televised because th- that's going to be a problem for defenses those two guys with a two-man game. And you love to see a player, you know, as renowned and experienced as Lyle Thompson, just instantly clicking with a young player like Asher Nolteen. Um, I love, I've, I know and, and love both of them uh, on and off the field. And it does make me happy to see them clicking so well already, already in week one. And I'm really, really excited to see what they can do uh, moving forward. Like the cannons, I, I will say, are extremely hard to root against. Um, they're, yeah, they're a really easy team to root for, but that makes me feel guilty about my hot take. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way to like soften the, the, how I say this. <laughs> that being said, I think the Bulls take this. Absolutely. Yeah. And then as far as the total goes, you just look at these two teams and what they did in week one. And again, a one week sample size does not a, you know, run to the bank and pull off the rubber band stat make, but 17 goals for Atlas, 16 goals for Cannon in week one. And then you see, yes, it's the highest total of the week, but 24 and a half Sure, you know, in the PLL, that's a decently high total, but I just look at that and I think a lot of people are going to be rushing to play that over. Um, you know, there, there was some decent net mining by both of these teams as well. So I don't know if I would feel as confident as maybe you should with these two offenses laying the highest total of the week going over. Any thoughts on that total, Devin? My thoughts are I'm going to approach this one uh, uh, differently than the the chaos game where with hmm. that, I think it does come down to goaltending. With the over in this one, I think it comes down to the potency of both teams' offenses. Mm. So, as I mentioned, you've got Jeff Teat on one side, and then you've got Lyle Thompson on the other. And I think just between those two, they could easily cover this this over. So, uh, I don't think that that total is out of the question. Um, I don't know if I'd say that it was a slam dunk, though. But I don't, I don't think it's it's totally crazy to think that that the over could hit. Well, and before we get you out of here and get the folks out of here on episode two of Over and Back, we've we've set up the clash of the titans, right, between Jeff Teat and Lyle Thompson. In week one, both of them were utterly disgusting, like just, just, just <laughs> filthy what they were doing on the field. And rightfully so, they're your number one and number two odds on favorites to win the MVP this year. Jeff Teat all the way down to plus 275, Lyle Thompson at 425, your take back there. So... I feel like from hearing you talk about your love for Atlas, I already know what the answer might be, but 
if you had to pick one of those guys for MVP, who's your pick? Or, um, you know, obviously in that one, but is there any other dark horse that you're maybe eyeing as a potential MVP candidate outside of those two? Ooh. Okay. Well, first of all, let me clarify. I got to stay loyal to my chaos. So (laughs) I think the Atlas might win it all this year. Am I a big fan? I don't know. We'll see. I'll see <laughs> Way to step that back. That was well done yeah, by you. That's let's, professional. Let's roll right that there, one back. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I want to go with a dark horse, and I'm trying to think of who. Dane Smith has had such an incredible year with mm-hmm. the NLL and the Bandits that I could see him keeping Keep that, that rolling. rolling once he joins the PLL, but then, of course, missing what the first two, three weeks could hinder that but i'm gonna say dane smith here with the chaos is gonna be the most valuable player there you go we'll have to uh, scroll down the list see what those odds are looking like Devin. yeah well i mean i know he hasn't played in the PL- pll yet but uh just based on his indoor game if i had to choose from lyle or jeff teed i would go lyle i would really do you think just from a value mm-hmm. standpoint or just because um, you know, with what Atlas has, Jeff T could maybe have a bit of a down game and they could still score. You know, you get law working, you get um, some of these other players. You have Chris Gray on the team now, whereas Lyle, you know, like he is the piston that's making that engine run, so to speak, for for cannons. You know, just just from from the value standpoint, is that mm-hmm. what kind of makes sense? And the longer odds as better as that eh, doesn't hurt too bad either when you get a 425 take back. Exactly. And I think, you know, this is Lyle's second season with the the Cannons. He's fully kind of immersing himself now in this league with this team. Uh, Paul Rabel retired. So Lyle has really, it seems, become, you know, the face of the Cannons, the leader of the Cannons. So I think most valuable player, of course, you know, scoring points and and your performance on the field matters, but it's also, you know, what you do to raise your team up. And Lyle Thompson, is an incredible teammate. And I think because of that, just his skills on and off the floor or the field, excuse me, I'm used to talking about box across, uh, <laughs> will make him the MVP. Absolutely love it. Some gold dropped all episode long by Devin Caney. Again, you can follow her at Devin underscore Caney. Uh, I did scroll down. The Dane Smith take back is even just worth a sprinkle alone, plus 7,500. And you have to figure <laughs> if if he comes on to the field and then is just, you know, rolling over, just like you said, um, you know, you got a little bit of extra money in your bankroll. Why not throw a five spot on it? That's, that ain't a bad take back at plus 7,500. <laughs> For a pretty damn good player right there. Right here first. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. That might have been the hottest of all the hot takes that we got here. So, again, Devin, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to hop on here with you. We'll have to have you back on and uh, hope you had fun with us. I did. I had a blast. Thank you so much again for having me. And that does it for us. That is our thoughts on the PLL slate for this weekend. So you can hop in the comments. You can respond to some of those hot or more tepid takes we were dropping. We'll be back again. Episode three dropping next week of Over and Back. Again, thanks to Devin Caney. And for Devin, for PLL Bets, I'm Dan Alexander. And we'll talk to you next week here on Over and Back.